Yo, this your boy, Kate yeah, Jackson, yeah, okay, Boogie right here, yeah. Crazy Baby TV, Crazy with my Baby boy. TV, boy, you already know I'm in the building, DJ DA Double Sloop, man, fuck with us, it ain't number real niggas on this side, man, Crazy Baby, we've been doing this for a minute, man, DJ DA, blah! You know it's DJ Proper representing for Crazy Baby TV, since you want rule, boy, love. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ken Jackson, right here, crazybabytv.com, doing the Facebook Live thing today. And there's a lot of shit going on in the world, huh? Obviously, uh, our fearless leader is fucking things up in D.C. as usual, but that's not news. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, let's see. Oh, Hollywood. Hollywood. The real rapist has been caught. I bet Bill Cosby is real happy to hear that shit too, boy. Let me tell you something. It is crazy, crazy, crazy uh, the way they crucified this man for months and months and months. And actually, the case is still ongoing because there's still some, excuse me, there's still some stragglers out there, uh, you know, trying to get at him. Um, but, uh, we, uh, you know, we all know who the real rapist is and it's this guy, Harvey Weinstein, multimedia mogul, uh, movie giant who, uh, not only, uh, has been accused, but they actually have a tape of this motherfucker trying to uh get this chick into his room or something uh and damn let me tell you something if they don't do to this guy what they did to cosby is going to be riots in the streets mark my word i'm not calling for riots in the streets i'm just saying all right now uh earlier in the news uh Donna Karen, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with her, uh, but she's a designer, uh, and she made a statement or some comments uh, on, uh, actually she asked a question, and I, I actually did get to see the video, uh, and, and basically she asked the question, uh, did these girls ask for it by the way that they were dressed? by the way that they presented themselves, by the way that they were packaged. And the internet is all in an uproar, you know, calling her all types of um, uh, terrible and, 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 you know, and things I wouldn't want nobody to call my mama. But, um, you know, claiming that she's defending this guy, so forth and so on. And I didn't see it as that. I simply saw it as what it was. She asked a question. And come on now. As much as many of us won't admit it, okay, with all the social, politically correct bullshit that's going on in the world, and in this country in particular, bottom line is this. Sexual harassment and, 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 and sexual predators ha have no place in our culture. I agree with that wholeheartedly. However, we are human animals and we are designed by nature to be attracted first by what we see, okay? And women, and men have to be attracted to each other in order for us to procreate and not become extinct. So I, I, I think it was definitely God's intention when he created us, for those of you that believe in God, that he gave us two eyes so that we could see what we like. 
and he made women very beautiful. He made women visually appealing to men and vice versa. Because, look, let's face it, y'all. 99.9% of y'all out there, okay, know good and damn well that you ain't going for the ugly duckling. That's real talk. Yeah, I said it because you motherfuckers are thinking it. Okay, so let's be real. It has nothing to do with me uh, trying to defend Harvey or nothing like that. The bottom line is this. We see beautiful women and women see handsome men and they're first attracted by what they see. Okay, same thing works in marketing. All the advertising, all the marketing that we do is based on visuals. Even the music industry now, everything is based on visuals. Okay? It has to be visually appealing to draw the consumers in. So obviously, when women are dressed a certain way, now I'm not saying women are dressing this way to bring attention to themselves, but it is a valid question. Because we are animals by nature, and nature designed us to be this way, okay? It's culture and society that has made a taboo to behold beauty or to be attracted uh, to someone who we feel is visually att attractive. Excuse me. You can't even compliment a woman anymore without being called some kind of predator or, or scumbag. Because you look at a woman and say, hey, you look very nice today. All of a sudden, that's sexual harassment. What say you? Okay. I'm from the old school. I was always taught to compliment people. If they look good, they look good. Man or woman, if a dude was handsome, yo, bro, you, yo, you look looking good today. Is that sexual harassment? You know what I'm saying? Not that I would say that because, no, I'm not admiring no dudes, you know, but I'm, the, the point is that if I see a beautiful woman you know, and, and I say, hey, you look very nice today, I'm not trying to harass her sexually, just trying to tell her she looks nice today. But somehow or another in this twisted society of ours, we got it all backwards now and we can't even compliment a woman on her appearance. And it's a damn shame that that we have to live in a culture like that now but anyway let's get back to the subject Harvey Weinstein is a predator I heard the tape today of him trying to coax some woman into his room and she was vehemently against going into this man's room and and he just continued to beg and beg and try to persuade her to go into his room and it was obvious it was obvious what his intentions were. He's trying to use the fame game, you know, and I'm this very famous man, and don't you embarrass me here, and, you know, and if you embarrass me here, you know, I'll never call you again, or I'll never do anything for you again. This is all this type of thing. So, as far as I'm concerned, he's a scumbag. He's using his power, using his position, you know, and trying to get this girl to go somewhere and do some things that she don't want to do. Okay, no means no, fellas. No don't mean maybe. No don't mean uh, really yes. No means motherfucking no. If the girl tells you no, then take it back off. Come on. You know what I'm saying? That's real talk. But anyway... Uh, Harvey needs to go. He needs to disappear, go crawl up under a rock, and if he has raped somebody, then he definitely needs to be prosecuted. He needs to be persecuted, just like they did to Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, who they had absolutely no evidence whatsoever other than the words of these women 40 years later, 30 years later, 20 years later. And I'm not defending Bill either. All I'm saying is that we got to be fair in our judgments. We got to be fair in our accusations. Bill was never proven guilty of anything. So we need to lay off this dude. 
Harvey hasn't been proven guilty of anything either, but there is one difference. There's a tape of this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no tapes of Bill Cosby nowhere that we know of. You know what I'm saying? So, six and one, half a dozen the other. You know, but the thing that, the, the, the thing that I see is that Harvey Weinstein is probably going to get a slap on the wrist when it's all said and done. He's going to pay out somebody a whole lot of money. It's going to go away. And he's rich enough now that he don't need to work no goddamn more anyway. So step aside and um, your career is over. I'm glad they, I, I got to admit, they did fire his ass quick from his own company. All right. So, uh, you know, but this needs to be pursued. If there are charges pending, then they need to be brought. He needs to be brought into court and and judged by a judge and a jury of his peers or whatever, however the fuck our system's fucked up anyway so he'll probably get away uh with nothing but a slap on the wrist because he is a powerful dude in in hollywood but bill was a powerful dude in hollywood too <laughs> but he was black harvey ain't black harvey's a jew let's see what happens and before y'all start getting on me about the anti-semitic bullshit just stop it I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm just saying the entertainment industry is controlled mostly by Jews. This is true. Okay. This is very true. And we all know that Jews in America have a lot of power. That's real. So shut the fuck up. If you're mad at me, I'm sorry. I said it, but damn it, don't try to paint me as no anti-Semite or whatever the fuck you want to call me, all right? Bottom line is Bill Cosby's a black man who forgot he was black, and they showed his black ass that he was black real quick when they wanted to get rid of him. Harvey's probably going to get a slap on the wrist because he's not black, all right? So let's put it in those simple black and white terms. How about that? All right, so anyway... What else is going on? I, you know, I haven't been on the air for quite a long time, you know, and so, yeah, forgive me. I'm rusty, very rusty. Of course, I was rusty before. I never proclaimed to be no great broadcaster, so don't get it twisted, y'all. I'm a rookie at this shit. Hopefully, uh, one day, though, I'll be a pro because I really, uh, I really enjoy it. Um, I, it's taken me a long time, though, to... You know, to get this thing uh, right, um, a lot of you don't know what's involved. You, you, you know, some people say, oh, all you got to do is turn on a webcam and a microphone and just do your thing. Well, that's, that's pretty much true. It's pretty much true. And that's what I did because I got tired of trying to come up with scripting and ideas and all this fancy bullshit. So I figured, hey, I'm going to turn on the fucking camera. Just let it do what it do. All right. So anyway, um, uh, enough of this editor bullshit and Hollywood news and stuff. Um, what I really wanted to talk about today was Crazy Baby TV and where we're headed. Um, we have been working so hard behind the scenes to get some things done. Um, I got some new partnerships. Uh, that we finally solidified uh, uh, in regards to marketing and promotions. Um, we're still uh, trying to put together a street team. So anybody here in the South Florida area that's interested in joining our street team, please hit us up. Um, but uh, I decided uh, recently, uh, most recently actually, to um, go all out a and r agency uh, marketing and promotion for music artists up and coming artists all genres uh production management so forth and so on now comes at a cost the music game has changed gone are the days of the record labels giving big deals and big advances and shit like that but what I'm going to be doing is sharing my 25 years of knowledge in the game uh, with helping a lot of you young cats out there set your labels up, set your business up properly, and, and 
help guide you to getting your careers moving uh, in the right direction uh, independently, helping you build your own and helping you own your own. Okay, so um, Crazy Baby TV, uh, through my contacts and, and, and connections, we now offer uh, full digital distribution services, which obviously you can do this shit all by yourself, it, which is true, okay? And you can probably do it for a lot cheaper than what I'm going to be charging y'all. But the bottom line is you're getting a team. Uh, you're getting a team with a lot of years of experience in making things happen. Um, you know, so obviously that comes at a cost. And even if you do this fully by yourself, which you can't, nobody can achieve anything by themselves because regardless of what you may have been told or what you've been sold, okay, everybody that's ever become successful at anything had help. Somebody helped them along the way, whether it, be, it was a mentor, uh, whether it was a friend or an associate or an investor or an angel from heaven or whatever. And then once you are successful, you continue, your, your continued success depends on the consumers who buy your product or buy into your idea. Okay, so. I'm here to help you achieve success in your music career. Plain and simple. We offer full distribution. We offer graphic design, printing, creative writing for those of you that need your press kits done, press releases, so forth and so on. Uh, full scale marketing uh, packages are available for those who want to reach out to radio. Change, uh, DJ spins all everything you need basically to get your career moving. I even have a recording studio if you're here on the Treasure Coast for you to come and record your product. And my recording studio here, along with the other services that my partner uh, provides, are the absolute best and one of a kind on the whole Treasure Coast. I guarantee that. Okay, we are the best studio on the Treasure Coast, hands down. You know what I'm saying? And and so, hey, come check us out. But anyway, crazybabytv.com is the new platform. Well, the platform itself isn't new, but it's going to be something new for you independent artists to take advantage of. And I behoove you to fully take advantage of what we have to offer here. Now, but... In the meantime, let me let me let me uh, share a couple of things with you, um, because um, a lot of you I don't think realize how serious this business is, um, and you really need to take your music career seriously. All right, uh, let let me show you um, what's what's happening in the industry right now. Okay, so up on the screen you see some stats about the digital age. These are 15.7 billion reasons you need to take your music seriously right now, okay? And reason number one, 50% of the market right now, digital shares, uh, digital shares of global revenue right now makes up 50%, okay? Digital sales growth is up 17, is plus 17.7%, okay? Uh, growth in streaming revenue up plus 60 percent okay there's a lot of money out there y'all in in this digital shit okay now uh, i know a lot of you were thinking hey how how can i make money you know off my digital music you know if i'm not selling cds and selling tapes or what and records or whatever which those days are long gone um um but how, how can you make money um you know, off off your digital music. And there's several ways to make money off your music. And now it's very important that you understand this. Licensing. Licensing is probably gonna be your your biggest money maker today. Okay. And what I mean by licensing, uh licensing is when you um for price allow a company or individuals to use your music 
uh, say like in a commercial campaign or for some sort of event or promotions or for whatever people pay you to use your music to push their cause or to further whatever it is that they're working on and you can get some nice checks from licensing some really nice checks from licensing okay just for example say kentucky fried chicken wants to use your song for an ad campaign now the beauty about licensing is is you can determine where they have permission to use that music you can determine how near or how far they can use your song whether it be just in north america whether it be the the western hemisphere or the eastern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere or the northern hemisphere or globally it's up to you to determine uh how far you want to let kentucky fried chicken go with your song okay you can say hey kentucky fried chicken you can use my song and uh but you can only use it in the united states you know what i'm saying because uh maybe you let mcdonald's use it in europe maybe you let uh, uh maybe you let popeyes use that shit in asia <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm just Popeyes and Asia. hey, don't get it twisted. Asians and in, in the Far East, they love American fast food now, from what I hear. But you know, I'm just saying, you determine where your music can be used at. But there's a catch. You gotta own your shit, okay? And see what's wrong with a lot of young artists out here now, especially rap artists, is that they don't own their damn music, okay? I can't tell you how many artists come through our studio here uh, and, and as soon as they get here, they say, hey, Ken, man, uh, go to YouTube, man, and download this beat for me. And, uh, you know, because, yeah, that's what we're going to work on. And we're going to put this out on my mixtape and this. And, and I'm like, and I, asked, I said, why are you wasting fucking time with these free beats on YouTube? You can't sell that shit. You don't own it. That's somebody else's music, okay? And they say, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to use it about, uh, and if it blow up, you know, I'll just cut them a check. It don't work like that. I, and I don't know where they get this twisted idea that you can just say, hey, you know, I'm going to use somebody's music until, you know, it blow up or until they sue me and shit, and da, da, da. And if I don't make nothing off it, they can't sue me because I ain't got shit to take any. But that's just dumb, all right? Dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. Setting yourself up from failure out the gate, all right? So here's what you want to do. Before you do anything, before you put a song out, before, first of all, all right, you got to set your business up. You got to treat your music career like the business that it is, and you have to determine first what structure that you want your business to operate in, whether that be a corporation or an LLC, which is a limited liability corporation, or a partnership, or a sole proprietorship. Now me, I highly recommend that you look at the corporate route. There's a lot of people out there doing LLCs, and LLCs are fine too, okay? Because it does give you uh, some of the corporate tax breaks, but it doesn't give you all of the corporate protections. And this is something that they don't teach you. A lot of lawyers will take a lot of money from you and tell you to go with an LLC. And they, under an LLC, you're not fully protected, okay? Even under a full corporation, you're not fully protected. But you do have a lot more advantages uh, if you just go ahead and go with a full corporation, corporate status, uh, when you're setting up your company, okay? Secondly, okay? Once you get your business set up, you need to register that company with one of the performing rights organizations. And you need to also register yourself if you're the artist with performing rights organization. And one of these organizations could be ASCAP or BMI or DSAC, SOCON, but whichever one you choose, because you can only be a member of one. You need to get registered. If you are the artist, you want to first register yourself as a songwriter. 
but you also want to get registered as a publisher. Okay. Now, I'm a member of BMI, and so I'll speak on BMI. To register as a songwriter with BMI is free. Okay, and it's a two year contract. All right. To register as a publisher with BMI is $150, and that's a five year contract. You want to get registered as both songwriter and publisher because there are two sets of royalties going on that are that are that are separate and different, okay? And 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 shares are divided, you know, based on ownership and publishing this thing. So and I'm not gonna get publishing is like a whole nother animal. It would take 10 shows to cover publishing and we still wouldn't cover it all. Okay. So we're not going to get too deep into that right now. I just want you to understand that you need to get yourself registered. Okay. Um, so once you're registered with a performing rights organization, okay, first our business was set up. Second, we register with performing rights organization. Okay. You also want to get yourself registered with sound exchange. Now, a lot of you are saying, what the hell or who the hell is Sound Exchange? Sound Exchange is a company that collects digital streaming royalties. Okay? These are royalties that, that come from companies like Pandora, iHeartMedia, internet radio stations, you know, so forth and so on. Okay? Yes, you can get paid from your streams and your downloads, even the freebies. Because the companies that are providing these streams and downloads have to pay royalties in order for them to legally stream these songs. All right? So, a lot of artists out there, I bet you didn't know that. A lot of money you're missing out on because you weren't set up right because you were ignorant. Nothing wrong with being ignorant, okay? Because ignorance can be cured through learning. Stupidity, on the other hand, is by choice. All right. So business setup, performing rights organization, sound exchange. Okay. Now, now that you got all that taken care of, okay. You also want to look in to, uh, getting yourself a UPC barcode. Okay. And why do you want to get your own barcode? Because this is what's going to go on to all your retail products, all your all your uh, hard products that you sell so that uh, they can get scanned and, and counted. Want to get a barcode for your records, for your music? Probably want to get a couple of barcodes for your retail items, your merchandise, shirts, hats, whatever. Okay, if you want to... Track those sales through, you know, you want to track your retail sales, you need that barcode, that UPC code, okay? And once you got that, uh, you're pretty much all set to go. Now you got to put, get your music together, okay? Now, we're going to go back to this leasing beats, you know, and these free beats on YouTube, okay? Free beats are not yours. You don't own them. You don't own the rights to them. So why would you waste your motherfucking time and all and your and your money in the studio recording songs to free beats that you cannot make money from? Does that even make sense to you? Because it don't make sense to me. Okay. See, what's wrong is a lot of niggas out here don't want to spend no damn money. Okay. They don't want to go pay. Uh, a producer to produce a track for him. And listen, there's a lot of kids out here producing beats. I mean, at least five or six every day. Whether they email me or, you know, or they call the studio or whatever, you know, wanting to get down, you know, wanting to know if anybody needs beats whatsoever. Let me tell you about these lease beats. All right, you go lease a beat and, you know, you do this little lease contract with the producer that leased it to you. And you're thinking, oh, it's all good now. I leased this beat, you know, whether I got me an exclusive or a limited lease or whatever. 
How many motherfuckers leased that beat before you did? Okay? Think about that shit. That beat could have been leased to a hundred other motherfuckers, to a thousand other motherfuckers before you came along and you decided you wanted to get a lease on that beat. Guess what? You don't own that damn beat. And you can't do shit with it. Sure, you can use it for promotional. Sure, the contract says you can sell 2,000 to 5,000 copies and, you know, and this, that, or the other. But why are you going to limit yourself when you can just pay a producer to make a beat just for you and then when it's done you own it all right spend the money take your career seriously okay there's a lot of young producers out here that might give you a track in return for credits because they're trying to come up too all right but I don't know about you. I'm a businessman. Uh, yes, I want to keep expenses low. But you know what? I want to own everything that I touch. So my artists, we buy beats for them. We make sure that they can own the music fully, 100%. We do the deals. We do the contracts with the producers that make them so that... Uh, when we do buy these tracks, these tracks ain't getting put on the lease site. They're not going out, you know, on the on the producer SoundCloud or none of that shit. We own that beat because we bought it. We paid for it and we had the producer make it for us. On the, you know what I'm saying? All right, so buy your music. Pay a producer and get your music done right. Okay, and in today's rough and tumble world, okay, I know budgets are, you know, a lot of you cats don't have money, you don't have budgets, all right? Don't be focusing on these damn mixtapes and shit, all right? I know they always tell you, hey, you got to throw material out there. You got Look, focus on making a great record. Once you got that great record done, okay, maybe two or three, you know, really, really good records. I mean, if you can't, Work extra hours, get your homeboys all chip in, do whatever, pull your savings or whatever, quit going to McDonald's, quit buying so much weed, quit buying so much liquor, you know, and, and, and save your coins up and maybe buy two or three good tracks, you know, from a producer. And you need to get the fuck out of this business because you ain't serious, right? All right, so buy your beat, pay for your music so you own it, all right? Write your lyrics. There's another thing I hate when artists come into the studio. Um, of course, if they're artists that are signed with me, they ain't going to do this shit. But I get a lot of clients that come through the studio and they don't have written lyrics. They come in, first thing they do, they go get a free beat off YouTube and then they get in my booth and then they're going to freestyle for, for two hours. Now, I, I don't care because they're paying me by the hour, you know? But then... These motherfuckers got the nerve to ask me, what do I think? Yo, you like the song? You like the track? You like the record? First of all, I ain't heard no damn record. I ain't heard no damn song. You just came in here and basically uh, practiced for two hours. You didn't put any serious work into making a record. You understand what I'm saying? So, no, I don't like the song. You know, but of course, you know, I want to keep a client. So a lot, most of the time I say, yeah, that's dope, bro. Yeah, doing your thing. You know what I'm mean? saying? I can pick and know, you know how much practice you want to get in. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind charging you. You can stay here all damn night. You know, clock is running. Bottom line. All right. Because like I said, if you're serious about your career, if you're serious about this music business, then you're going to take my advice and do the right thing. But I really hate when these cats come in. Free beats, freestyling, and then they're wondering why the hell they can't make nothing happen. Because they're not doing the things that they need to do to make things happen. All right. So, 
now that you got everything in order, business is done, you bought some beats, got your lyrics written out, come into the studio, you know, you spend a few hours, you know, really working on putting together, you know, two or three good records. Now all those records are done. Got them recorded, mixed, mastered, everything sounding great, okay? You got to think about your marketing now. No, don't put your song on SoundCloud. No, don't upload it to YouTube. No, don't do none of that shit because it's not ready yet. You're not ready yet, right? How are you going to present yourself to the public? What are you going to look like? Did you put your marketing plan together? Think about it. All right, so that's enough for today. I'm going to come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about marketing your record, okay? We're going to talk about putting your plan together to market and promote uh, photo shoots, things of that nature, everything that you need to do in order to get ready to launch your record, all right? I'm your boy, Ken Jackson. This is CrazyBabyTV.com. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.